welcome to Nightline. We are thrilled that you have decided to join us Amen. tonight. Amen. And we hope you'll stay with us, right? Amen. Scott's with me, and we're going to be sharing scripture. We have a lot of things going on tonight. Our guest this evening is Reverend Philip Geschwind. He's a short-term missionary for the International Pentecostal Holiness Church. He's going to be telling about the places he's been, um, some of his experiences, and the places he's going. Um, our music tonight is from Allison Williams and Ashley Coward, and our prayer partners are here with us. So if you want to call in a prayer request, a praise report, a comment, you can call the number on your screen, or you can go to WGGS16.com, click prayer, type in your message. And also, our prayer partners would be happy to pray with you right here and now. They're live. They're here. Mm -hmm. And uh, they'll be happy to do that. We always enjoy hearing from you, our viewing audience. We enjoy that. And they let us know what you're saying and what your needs are, and we'll pray over those too. But right now, we're going to have a song from Ashley Coward and Allison Williams, Blessed Be the Lamb. Mercy bore the name 
thank you, Ashley and Allison, for that song. Beautiful. Blessed be the Lamb. And Scott's going to start us off with our scripture tonight. Amen. Our scripture comes from Matthew chapter 4, verse 16. It says, The people which sat in darkness saw great light. And to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. If we look at a few scriptures up, it said that Jesus, when he heard John the Baptist was thrown in prison, he said he left Nazareth and went into Galilee. And that part of Galilee was, was actually the Gentiles. And that's what the scripture believe is talking about, that the Gentiles, the people which sat in darkness. You know, we, we as, as people, before we came to Christ, we sat in darkness. There, we had darkness all around us. We didn't know Christ. We didn't know the light of the world. But it goes on and says that unto them which sat in the regions in the shadow of death, light is sprung up. You know that being, being without the light, being part of the darkness is, is death. We have no hope if we don't have Jesus Christ Amen. living in us. But Christ, he, he came, He lived, He died, but He rose again as we, we just celebrated Easter, that He rose again, but He died that we didn't have to stay in death. We didn't have to stay in darkness, but He bought us back. He paid His life, His blood, to buy us back, to give us a new life, a new joy, a new light in Christ so that we as people of God could continue that light, could continue in we didn't have to walk in the shadow of darkness. But it said light is sprung up. And that newness, that life in Christ in us is the hope of glory. It's sprung up. It's it gives us an excitement when, when we give our life to Christ. There is an excitement that, that it, you, you almost can't comprehend it. It's just, it's just too much. And, but it's a joy unspeakable. And it says it's full of glory. And Jesus wants to do that for each of us. Just as he tells us here in this book, in this, in this t chapter, that light is sprung up. Let it, let it spring up in your life today. If you don't know Jesus Christ, then you're missing out. Come to Him. Open up His Word and let Him, let him pour His self. Let Him pour that light into you. You don't have to live in that darkness. The enemy, mm -hmm. Satan, wants to come in and tell you that mm -hmm. there is no hope. There is no light. But as you know well, you can go into a dark room and all you have to do is, is put a spark and that little spark is seen anywhere and everywhere. But when light is, is come in, the darkness is dispelled. Satan will be no more. He cannot come in and, and do the things that he did to you when you have Christ in your life. Amen. Let him come in to you. Amen. It's we need the light of Jesus Christ Amen. in our lives. And we're going to continue this little study on light tonight with Philippians 2, 14 and 15. Do all things without complaining and disputing that you may become blameless and harmless, children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. You know, Jesus said as long as he was in the world, he says, as long as I'm here, I'm the light of the world. And then he says, you are the light of the world. Mm -hmm. And he's no longer here in human form to be the light, but he has placed his spirit inside of those who have received his light. And his Holy Spirit shines the light through us to other people if we will allow him to do that. And um, as the people of God, those who have received his light, we need to understand the simple fact that we are the light of the world. Right. We are. Um, 
I remember my aunt and uncle years ago, the first time they had ever been to Denver, and they came back home and they were so excited. They said, you should have seen it. We got there and it was kind of dark and you could see the lights for miles. You could see the lights of Denver. We need to be like the lights of Denver. We need to shine like those lights. If we hide our lights, then what we're doing is keeping others from knowing Jesus and we're not glorifying God. That's right. And you know, the question is, can we make a difference? Absolutely, we're the only ones who can. Those who don't have the light in them can't shine light. Only we can. Um, if you have, you've talked about the dark room, if you have two rooms and there's a door in between them and there's darkness on this side, light on the other side, and you open up that door, light's going to flood in to that dark room. Darkness is not going to flood in, in and extinguish the light. It doesn't work that way. So we need to make sure that we are the light, that we are the light of the world, that we open up the door of our hearts and let his light flood in. Um, a while back, our grandsons found a book light of mine and a little Dollar Tree lamp, okay? And they came racing through the house to show me their finds, and they called them light changers. And I said, what? Uh, I wanted to find out, did I hear them correctly? And, and I had. Not only that, but I heard them later saying that they were light changer boys, and they were going to the rescue. <laughs> and I started thinking about that, and I thought, yeah, that's exactly what we're supposed to be doing. That's exactly who we're supposed to be. Amen. We're supposed to shine. Light changes things. And we're to change the world around us with the light of Jesus Christ shining through us. And yes, we are on a rescue mission to rescue lost souls. And we need to let our lives and our words shine the light of Jesus Christ to bring others into the kingdom. As children of God, that's our job. That's what we're supposed to be. We are light changer people, and we need to change the world. When we walk into a spiritually dark room, our light should be evident. It should be evident that we have something inside of us, and people should see it. And when we are like that, then Jesus will be glorified. We're going to go to another song right now. It's um, Ashley Coward singing, I Am Not Alone.
strength, you're my defender. You are my refuge from the storm. Through these trials, you've always been faithful. beautiful song from Ashley. I'm not alone. Jesus is with me and I'm so glad. And also with us is Reverend Philip Geschwind and he is a short-term missionary with the IPHC. And Philip, it's really great to have you tonight. We've been looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's my privilege, my pleasure to be here with you tonight. Um, this is not my first trip um, to the station. Um, previously in 2010, uh, I was invited to come and talk about what was happening after the big earthquake in Haiti. And on my way, I have a funny story to tell about that. On my way to the station, I made an unexpected stop at a house that I was working at. And I had my suit pants on, but I had my coat and my tie in the vehicle. And uh, as I walked into the basement of this house, uh, the owner had propped up a broken mirror which reached out and tore the side of my pants <laughs> as I walked by. And I, I didn't have time to go back home and change my pants. I had to come right on to the station. But fortunately, the tear was high enough that my coat would cover the tear. And I sat in such a way, <laughs> but I was constantly afraid that night that I would move and that torn place on my, in my pants would, <laughs> would be seen. <laughs> But uh, we overcame that night, and I'm glad to say that I'm here again, suit intact, ready to share with you again tonight. And this is the very suit that I wore <laughs> that night, whole patched, fortunately. <laughs> okay. So th thank you for letting me come. Oh, it's, it's great to have you. I mean, I, I find your titles for your segments very interesting. I mean, I really do. And I know that this one is ripped pants. That's right. <laughs> And you had, you had told me, you know, about having the pants and you were going to try to wear those that were ripped your first time. And I thought that was great. But, you know, I just want you to go ahead and just share your heart with us and, and what's going on. Well, in 2010, after that uh, horrific earthquake in Haiti, um, it resulted in tremendous destruction and loss of life. I had worked in Haiti previously uh, constructing a church in northern Haiti and I felt a personal connection to the devastation. So I became part of a, a team that went into Haiti five days after the earthquake mm. and we observed all the devastation, bodies laying in the street, all the buildings collapsed, all of those horrendous situations and our job was to come and to assess the situation, see how our ministries were doing, our churches, our people. And uh, so it, it, it ended up with uh, a commitment that I made to work in the country of Haiti, Haiti for the next 16 months. I was hosting medical teams, construction teams, and it was my privilege and my, priv uh, and my pleasure, although it was a difficult time. A scripture that the Lord gave to me during that period of time illustrates how I felt then and how I felt now. And it's found in 1 Samuel 17 and verse 29. The young David had come to the battle lines to visit his older brothers and to also bring provisions for them. And 
the, and he observed what was happening at the front line. The Philistines had a giant named Goliath who daily would hurl insults across the battlefield and mock the Israelites and their God. So when David heard and saw uh, what was going on, he said these w words in 1 Samuel 17, verse 29. He said, is there not a cause? Mm -hmm. Now, that phrase could be interpreted a few different ways. But in looking at the whole passage of Scripture, I think David was upset at the fact that not a single person in the army of Israel had the courage to take on Goliath. Now, as Christians, we have to see what's going on around us in the world. Yeah. Satan rails against the earth and those that serve God, insulting us and God by doing all he can to destroy earth and mankind. Mm -hmm. Christians, I ask you today, is there not a cause? When you look around you, is there not a cause that we should engage in the fight? Should we not be doing all we can to stand up for God and His kingdom in the face of whatever giants are standing against us? I made a commitment then to serve in a difficult place, but I have always felt that as a child of God, I have a responsibility to serve Him in whatever capacity that I can, to serve Him in whatever situation I, uh, that I am in. As Christians, we all have the same enemy. His name is Satan. Yes. But he sends out different giants to face us. To some, it may be the drug addiction that's taking over their community. To others, it may be the onslaught uh, against the family unit. To others, it may be the turning away from bib biblical values in, Washing yeah. in Washington. To others, it may be as close as the loneliness of their neighbor. But there is a cause, and we must answer the call. We must engage in the fight. We must do what we can to, to fight for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in whatever way we can. Now, to me, there, the, the problem is that many Christians remain in the camp and talk about the giants around them but fail to enter the battlefield. Yeah. They are waiting on a voice from heaven to call them to be a missionary to some foreign country or they're waiting on a, on a, on a, on a sign to, come, to spill across the heavens calling them to write a best-selling devotional. <laughs> the challenge is all around us and we all have the ability to make a difference there is something we all can do. There's a phrase that I uh, like to repeat very often. It says, I got talent, you got talent, all God's children got <laughs> talent. Don't worry about what you can't do. Do what you can do. Absolutely. Too many people are stuck worrying about what they cannot accomplish and never do anything. In the recent world events, there's a new giant that has risen in the country of Ukraine. A war has been waged on that country by Russia for inexplicable reasons. The church organization that I'm part of has grown to over 200 congregations in Ukraine. Wow. In 2017, I was invited to be part of a church plant there. My ministry has been primarily in Latin Caribbean countries so I was uncertain why I felt God leading me to go. But I went and I experienced some new things about what is God is doing around the world. In light of current world events, I now know why God called me at that time to go to Ukraine. One thing I learned there was that there's a vital tool for planting churches in Ukraine, and that's an inflatable bouncy house. That's the thing that makes a difference. And I learned that um, as you minister to uh, people, they will respond. Uh, we had a, a community event, invited families to come. They came, the children had, uh, had fun playing in the bouncy house. They were meal, uh, there was a, a meal provided and things. But the children and parents came. I delivered a message uh, that targeted the children. And when the invitation was given, 
Several children and adults responded. Wow. However, in the midst of, of that scene in my mind from 2017, I now look at what's going on in Ukraine today. There are five million children now without a home. Oh, and my heart is broken. Yes. What a tragedy. Is there not a cause? Yes. However, in the midst of tragedy, there is hope. The church in Ukraine is being a light in the midst of great darkness. It's been said that the light is brightest when the night is darkest. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> A few days ago, I asked the pastor I worked with in Ukraine, what would you say to the church in the U.S.? And he wants us to know how thankful they are for the support from the churches and also the support that's being given them from the U.S. government and other governments around the world. The church there is sheltering and feeding the displaced. They're helping people to relocate they meet twice a day in person or Zoom to encourage each other and pray. Pastor Alexander sees the overwhelming mission to help people recover emotionally from the hell of this world, of this war, war, from those robbed, beaten, raped, and who've lost their families. It's an overwhelming task, but the church is showing up in the country of Ukraine. Mm -hmm. I'd like to offer up a quote to that was given to me from Pastor Alexander for you to consider. And he says, God did not leave Ukraine. He's with us in basements, bomb shelters, under fire, in danger, at worship services. He has a very serious conversation with us. He purifies and brings us closer to Him. And most importantly, he prepares us for the time when all Christians all over the world will be persecuted, hated by all nations, and killed for the name of Jesus Christ. The time is near for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ for the church. What a statement given by Pastor Alexander. Amazing. What a clear understanding of what this is really about in Ukraine. Surely we can see that world events continue to remind us that Jesus is coming again and Jesus is coming soon. The giants are shouting their insults at humanity and we must respond. Respond in the place and situation God has placed you. As for the war in Ukraine, at the very least, it's our responsibility to support the church with our prayer and with our giving. Help them to be a light in the darkness that they are facing. I finished with a great illustration from an 80-year-old woman I met in Ukraine, Petrina Parishna. She could not do much, but she would go out to a park bench and sit with her open Bible. Someone would come along and ask if they could help her, and she would ask them to read to her. <laughs> then she would begin to witness to them about what they were reading and win them for Christ. She had no family, so the church was her family. The church that Alexander pastors was having a difficult time getting the proper registration for the church building. So this little lady got dressed up with all of her military medals and went down to City Hall and confronted those in authority. Now, could you refuse an 80-year-old, 100-pound powerhouse like that? <laughs> the problem was resolved and the church property secured. Mm -hmm. She had no fear because she knew who she represented. She faced the Goliath facing her church and was victorious. Mm -hmm. Friend, I ask you, if she could do it, can't you? God is not asking you to change the whole world. Just change the world that surrounds you. Share the love of Jesus Christ by helping your neighbor. Share your story. And that leads to sharing his story. Amen. 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 There's so much we can do. There's so much we need to do. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more too. Uh, but right now, Allison Williams is going to sing a song called New.
is the sun that conquers mountains, singing over what has been asleep. What is this that softens all my doubting? It's you. by the hurt of yesterday who could create in me the vision of a little child it's you you take an ordinary day you turn it into flowers like the month of May yes you do you see all We can be new, we can be made new, and we can help make other people new too. Mm -hmm. um, we have Reverend Philip Geschwind with us, and you were talking just a few minutes ago about how we can help um, the people in Ukraine was by giving and through prayer, which both are important at this point. How can they, um, how can people give to help? We're gonna put a contact up on the, uh the information up, uh, where you can give, give at IPHC.org. And, uh, but there's more information there, where to give. I was asking uh, our director of uh, Eastern uh, Europe uh, where we were at in giving through our denomination, through our organization, mm -hmm. and to date we've given over $400,000. Wow. Okay. It's being dispersed throughout the churches all through the nation and also mm -hmm. uh, in Poland as there's, as there's churches there that are also assisting in uh, in the recovery effort. So uh, that would be one contact to give. And I'm so okay. thankful that, that churches and Christians have responded and have given 
to help them. The, those people are not able to work right now, but the churches are still open every day, uh, ministering to the needs. And uh, so we're, it's, it's our privilege uh, to, to help them financially to continue to stay open. Yeah. And so just anybody who wanted to give can just get that, that link, link. And, and do that. That's great. Yeah. Well, I'm going to just ask you to, to move on because I know that your next topic is a broken bowl. Yes, a, gr a great story. <laughs> I want to hear it. <laughs> a few years ago, uh, my wife and I were considering retirement from our secular jobs, and I thought about pursuing an interest that I'd had for many years, and that interest is, in, is pottery. So my daughter uh, and I went and took a private lesson in Brevard, North Carolina, and I started uh, down this road, and it's been almost two and a half years ago that I started and I brought a few pieces that I've made tonight. This is what I call a puzzle box. Uh, it's called a puzzle box because there's only one way that the lid can go onto the box. And uh, yeah, it's beautiful. We, we use that for storage at our house. Mm -hmm. And this piece I've called my Easter basket. <laughs> and so my it, it, uh, last year prior to Easter, uh, I came up with this idea based on the Easter baskets that we had had for several years uh, as a child myself and then as for my children and so this is my version of the Easter basket. It looks like one with eggs and everything. Right. I didn't make the eggs. I okay, did make okay. the basket <laughs> and the handle. So uh, I took these private lessons. I really enjoyed myself and I made a few pieces that I left to be glazed and fired. And a few weeks later the pieces came and I was excited to see what I had done my first piece was a bowl, and I was thrilled at how well it turned out. I didn't know if I could do this or not, but it turned out well, and uh, I was hooked. I, when the piece came, I put it on the counter for my family to see when they came home. And my, when my wife came, she was really impressed. And when my daughter and grandson came, they were excited about my first work of art. Wow, I did that. But just a few minutes later, my grandson was playing with a toy too close to the counter <laughs> and knocked the bowl off and it flew into a dozen pieces. Oh. I was mortified. Oh. I wanted to cry. I was so proud of this first piece. <laughs> I had to leave the room before I said the wrong thing. The thing I had labored for so hard was ruined. After leaving the room, I composed myself and I realized that there was something broken that was more important than my bowl, and that was my grandson Noah's heart. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I went back and I hugged him and I tried to comfort him over the loss. And later I was able to super glue the pieces back together <laughs> and now I have an object that's more valuable because it tells the story of the potter putting the pieces back together again. Oh, yeah. And I've actually carried this piece uh, to foreign countries to use as an object lesson and talk about putting the pieces back together again. So it has spiritual value it now. It has spiritual value now. One of my favorite scriptures is 2 Corinthians 4, verse 6 through 10. For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We are hard pressed on every side yet not crushed. We are perplexed but not in despair, persecuted but not forsaken, struck down but not destroyed, always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus the life of Jesus also may be manifest in our body. A great mystery to me is the relationship of God to man. We compare the infinite to the finite, the all-powerful to the weak, the limitless to the limited, the eternal to the few years, the all-knowing to the unknowing, and we see a great paradox. How and why is it that God pours himself into us, mere mm -hmm. earthen vessels? Mm -hmm. The answer is so that His power and greatness can be seen in us. Isn't that amazing 
that the all-powerful God pours himself into us. So I've enjoyed pottery for a few years now, and I have learned some lessons that I have uh, used to reveal spiritual truth. One I'd like to share with you is that when you start a piece of pottery, you start with a plan and a purpose for that piece. In your mind, you imagine what you want it to be. The clay doesn't just jump off the wheel or the table into a useful piece. You have to plan it. Your mind has to imagine what you want. From my mind, it goes to my hands, and my hands form it into what I intend it to be. And so it is with mankind. God has a plan and a purpose for each of us. He's molding and shaping us as He intends us to be. His fingertips are all over us. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing? Yes. That God's fingertips are upon us molding us and shaping us to what he wants us to be, gently but firmly moving us to his purpose. From a lump of clay to the final piece, from the birth to the grave, what a comfort and joy to know that my destiny is to be God's masterpiece. I've also learned that there are many types of clay and vessels that can be made. It's all up to my needs and my imagination. I can never make the exact copy of a piece. It's always slightly different. They're all originals. The master potter doesn't make us all the same either. No. We may be similar to others, but every one of us is unique. However, all of us are just lumps of clay created with a purpose. In our mother's womb, God imagined the plan that he had for us. And what a joy it is to realize that he had me on his mind, thinking about what he wants me to be. <laughs> Friends, you're not an accident, mm -hmm. but a masterpiece in the making. Another lesson I've learned as a potter is that sometimes things don't go right. Mm -hmm. We always keep a bag full of attempts. You don't throw away the clay. You reprocess it and try again. In Jeremiah, we read the story where the potter was working the vessel and it became marred or spoiled. So the potter started over and made something else. I'm so glad that God doesn't throw us away when things don't go the way He wants. Amen. He works on us and gets us to the place that He can start over again and still make us His masterpiece. Mm -hmm. Maybe not what He originally purposed for us, but still something useful and beautiful, amazing. Another lesson I've learned as a potter is there comes a point when heat has to be applied to the vessel in order for it to become useful. The clay has to be hardened. And in pottery, the most common process is first a bisque firing and then a glaze firing. And temperatures range up to 2,400 degrees Fahrenheit, wow. depending on the material. And so it is for the believer being made into what God purposes for our life. There will come a time when we will go through the fire in heat of trial and testing, hardening us to be used by the master potter. Mm -hmm. I have seen videos of pots glowing from the heat they've been sub subjected yeah. to. And so some have endured extreme heat in their lives, but from the hottest furnaces come the most beautiful and purposeful vessels. We need to remember that when the heat is on, God's got a purpose and a plan for our lives. Mm -hmm. The last lesson that I have time to talk about tonight comes from the story I first told about my grandson. Even though pottery has gone through the production process, it still can be dropped, an accident can happen. It can get knocked off the table. And even in those instances, when it shatters into several pieces, there are, is still hope, super glue. <laughs> there may be someone listening, listening to me tonight that at one time found and functioned in their place that God intended. But then there came an uh-oh moment. Your life and purpose came crashing into many pieces. 
there is super glue stronger than any other called the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and He can fit the pieces of your life together so that once again you're useful to the master potter. Why did God pour Himself into earthen vessels? So that the ex excellency of His power could be seen in us? It's not the vessel, but it's what's in it that Amen. counts. Yes. Now, there are few, still a few cracks visible in this bowl that was broken. If you look carefully, you'll still see some cracks in this vessel that was broken when my, when my grandson had the uh-oh moment. <laughs> but friends, I want to tell you tonight, let God make your life what He purposes for it. And if you have an uh-oh moment, let the power of the Holy Spirit put you back together again so that you can be useful and be, find the place that's, that, God has, that God wants for you in His kingdom. Amen. 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 You know, there are, I don't know anybody who hasn't had an uh-oh moment. <laughs> I think we've all done things that, oh, I really blew it that time. And I just want to say, if you're watching tonight and, and you know that you've really messed up, Maybe you've never given your life to Jesus Christ. You can right now because he loves you. He cares for you. And he wants to mold you and to make you into what he knows you're meant to be. He wants to do that. His love is towards you. And so if you don't know him, please give yourself to him tonight. Repent of sin. Turn to him and he will make you new. We're gonna have another song right now from Ashley and Allison called Steel.
when everything and everybody is in confusion and chaos all around us, we can be still and know that God is God. Know that he will take care of whatever situation arises. You know, I find myself worrying over the same thing that God's already spoken to me and dealt with me about before, and he came through for me, and I find myself worrying again about it. I did that just this past week. And, uh, and he said, Patty, give it all you've got. I, I couldn't sing. And I just t spoke in my spirit and said, don't hold out at the first part, because we were doing a lot of music. Don't hold out on the first part thinking that, you know, you have to, he said, the cruise of oil will not fail. And he did not fail me. He did not fail. And I gave it everything I had. And I had not been able to sing, but I was able to sing. And it may not be singing to you. It may be something a whole lot more important than that. But you are in trouble and you have problems and things are not going well for you. Look to Jesus. Look to Jesus and listen to Jesus because he can turn things around. He can make things differently. We have a lot of prayer requests here and we're, not, we're gonna read some a little bit later, but there are a lot of prayer requests. And why do people call in prayer requests? Because they know that God can do something about it. And when we have faith in him, then we know, we know that he'll hear us. Amen. We'll know that he'll hear us. And when our hearts are turned toward him, he says, that's my child. And when we're not his child, he says, that one is calling out to me and I'm going to draw him in. So it doesn't matter what area of life you find yourself in. God wants to draw you to himself enough that he sent Jesus Christ to die for you so that you can live, so that you can have life more abundantly. And that is a spiritual life that starts the moment you are saved. It starts right then. We're going to take just a small break and we're going to be back because we have more to share. Our guest has more to share. Our musicians have more to share. And um, we're going to be praying over requests as time permits. And so stay with us. Don't go anywhere. And, you know, while we're taking this little break, you can call somebody and say, Nightline's still on. Why don't you tune in if you haven't already? And, you know, maybe God can speak to hearts. That's our prayer that God will speak to hearts, that God will change hearts and change lives because we know he can. So stay tuned, stay with us for more of Nightline.